and welcome back to this very special episode. I hope all of you enjoyed our season 4 episodes. So remember what I said? This season is all about the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Now, we are moving on to a very important and interesting topic. Our this week's topic is, Is God in the Old Testament a harsh God? This can be a very tricky question. Have you thought about this, Bambinos? Have you thought about how God is so different or appears to be so different in the Old Testament compared to the New Testament? Is He actually any different? In this episode, we will be finding out just that. So, Bambinos, before we get started, let's go and learn our Bible words. Are you guys ready to do this with me? Let's do this, Bambinos, together. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn our Bible words. Hello, Bambinos. Today's episode is God in the Old Testament. Did you know that God of the Bible is the God of creation, God of eternity, and God of salvation, and is also referred to as the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, as it is mentioned in, in Exodus 6 verses 3 and 4. The account of the book of the Exodus is now re re referenced in the New Testament in Acts 7 verse 31 where God in the Old Testament is Jesus in the New Testament. God said to Moses, I am that I am. God is the only one who can say I am. He is the great I am. He is very present help in times of trouble. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Our God is not just the God of the past or of the future. He is the God of the present. That means God wants to do something in our lives today. What an amazing Bible was. Bambinos, please remember to remember it and learn it by the end of our episode. So Bambinos, now that we have received our Bible verse, let's get this episode started. I know I am so excited and I hope you are too. So Bambinos, let's first go and listen to our story. Bambinos, let's have you on your feet and let's do this Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go Bambinos. Let's go and listen to our story. Today. Many of us think that the God of the New Testament was very loving and kind, but the God of the Old Testament was very cruel and harsh. What do you think, Bambinos? Was the God of the Old Testament really that cruel and harsh? 
Many people may think that the God of the New Testament is loving and the God of the Old was harsh because of the many instances that happened in the Old Testament, like when God sent a huge flood and wiped out the entire world, even the children. This may question your faith, but don't let it. Instead, say these things if anybody ever asks you these questions. Noah and the flood. When the flood was caused, don't just think that it was one cause and God didn't give them any chances. I know when the flood was there, there might have been many, many children during the action. And when God had taken over the whole world in the flood, there must have been countable amounts of children. But nowadays, it's children that are doing more violence than the parents, not the parents doing more violence than the children. And of course, surely, God did give them chances. This is the words that atheists would normally say, or non-Christians, that when God caused the flood, did he not think of the children there? God did give them many chances. In the Bible, it says, those who call evil good and good evil, woe to them. And those who call bitter sweet and sweet bitter, woe to them. And those who call darkness light and light to dark, light darkness, woe to them. This means that God did not cause any evil then. So basically, God gave them three chances. First, he sent them and he... Noah and the ark. Have you ever thought so deep into Noah and the ark? Push yourself so far into that. Wasn't God even slightly cruel when he flooded the whole world? Who knows how many children were there and how many children got persecuted with the mighty floods? This would be the sort of response an atheist or non-Christians would give. But that is not what you should say. Because our God in the Old Testament was not cruel, not cruel at all. In fact, he had given them three chances. In, in the Bible, it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good for evil, who call light darkness and darkness light, and who swap bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So our God was not evil at all. But if you look into how much patience our God had on these people, you will see that it was not a cruel decision that he made this. First, he sent them to the earth and he made them a good nation. Then he sent Noah, his prophesier, and wanted to change them. Finally, God pushed it so far that even if they didn't change then, he sent Noah with the boat and the ark. Noah would welcome anybody into there, but then they mocked him and said, there is no such flood. What sort of nonsense are you saying? God had given them three pure chances when they could have entered the boat and survived. But none of them wanted to do a thing. Instead, they mocked the Lord by mocking Noah. And through Noah, they had mocked the Lord. There must have been tons and tons of children there too. But them, themselves, they could have also entered the boat. But it was their guardian that did not let them. This is not for God to blame. It is for their guardian. And nowadays, the children become like their adults and the adults so on. So nowadays, more children are doing more violence than the adults, because that is how it goes. So God was very, very patient on them, with a huge amount of patience on them to make sure about this final deal that God had made. So do not think that the Lord did this without any chance. He did give them chances and they disobeyed these chances and took them for granted. That is the only reason that they did not survive the flood. A long time ago, far, far before Jesus was born, the God's people, the Israelites, were captured by the Egyptians and they were made as slaves to work under Pharaoh's hands. And they would do Pharaoh's work and they would never answer back. The people of God, the Israelites, they cried to the Lord and they asked him to save them from their misery. And in the end, God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and to tell him to set his people free. And now you may think, wait a minute, isn't that the time when God sent the angel of death to kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt? 
That may, that might sound cruel, but really, this isn't God's fault. Don't blame it on him. Continuing with the story, Moses came in and said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But again and again, Pharaoh mocked God repeatedly and said to Moses, no, I will not let your people go. In the end, Moses said to Pharaoh that there will be 10 plagues and each plague meant that you were getting one more step closer to the final test. And then all the plagues started to come in. There were frogs, the death of the cattle. There were locusts and lice. And then in the end, the 10th plague was the murdering of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, in every household. The only ones that were spared were the ones that put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and ate the Passover feast. Now this might sound cruel, but if you think about it, there were so many chances. God already sent nine plagues, but still Pharaoh was arrogant and he thought that he was better than God. He, God sent nine plagues and before that he already told Moses to tell him and Moses must have told him multiple and many times. But still, Pharaoh didn't let go of his arrogance and all the blood of the firstborn child was on Pharaoh. It was all his fault. If only he just listened to God, then none of this would ever have happened. Adam and Eve, when God created the world, he did this with pure love and this was all in mind in the Old Testament. When he created the world, he created Adam and many plants and bushes and all sorts of fruit. To make Adam happy, he gave Adam everything he wanted in the most beautiful garden, the Garden of Eden. They had many bushes, roses, fruits, flowers, vegetables, so many things. But God gave Adam one rule, that he could not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Lest you eat that, you will die. To make Adam even more happy, he gave him a wife named Eve. Then they could do anything they wanted. God held nothing away from them except from one single tree. One root of a tree did God keep from him, which was nothing compared to the size of that whole garden. That one tree was what caused them into misery. God had already told them the coincidences what would happen if they eat, ate of that fruit, and they still did. Eve, knowing what would happen from Genesis 2 verse 17, it says, If you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will die. Eve knew those words from God, and then, anyways, she ate of the fruit. There were so many chances that God had given her, so many things to make her happy, everything she had wanted but then she had to disobey God in the one thing she didn't want him to do. So anyways God was not cruel at all for kicking them out of the garden. God had said that he would kill them but he had mercy on them and only banished them from the garden of Eden. So God still had pity on his servants and did not do as much harm as he said. God was pure full mercy and had so much mercy on them before doing this act. So the God of the Old Testament is definitely not as harsh as you would see with a blank mind. The most obvious one is about heaven and hell. Many people think if God is such a loving God, if he's so kind, so merciful, so lovely and beautiful, why would he send his own people that he made into a place of fire, hell. Why would he do that if he was so loving and kind? I'm a tiny bit confused. Isn't that cruel and harsh? But then if you think about it, God said that if you disobey me, you will be apart from me. And every time someone sins, God doesn't cause them to sin. They sin on their own accord. They choose to sin. They want to be away from God when they sin. They didn't say, oh, I just feel like sinning. They chose to do it themselves. 
God didn't make them. And people think that God is so loving and so merciful. Wouldn't you just send everyone to heaven and there's no hell then? Because if he's so kind and loving, he'll just send everyone to heaven. But no, God is loving, merciful, but he's also very just. That means he will provide people what they deserve based on what they have done. Say, if I was to do two pieces of homework, that means I would get two good points. But if the person next to me only did one piece of homework, that means they would only get one point. See, that means if the person did no homework, that means they would get no points. They can't just say, oh, well, they're all students and I'm very kind. So I'm gonna give all of them two points. That's not fair because then the person that did the homework just did it for nothing. That isn't really fair. That is why God has to be just and punish people based on their sins. So if anyone says that God is cruel because he sends people to hell, no, God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell by doing sin against God. God had also given these people 120 years to change. He had given them the prophets, the saints, and so many others. In the Bible, it, it writes, I will not abide in men forever, but for 120 years, I will abide in men. So God had given them many chances for them then to fall into sin and go to hell. Many prophets had came. There was many, there was Google, there were so many things. There's the Bible. You can read straight out of that. And even if you don't have it, there is Google. You can get so much things off that about the prophets and the saints. And then you could have not committed sin, especially when you know that you are sinning on purpose. And then yet you do the sin. What, do, what should God do? What, sh sh should he just send you to heaven? No, he has to send you to your just place. He has to send you to hell if you do that much sin, knowingly and on purpose. So, Bambinos, now, what do you think about God? Do you think in the Old Testament God was cruel or was he not cruel? I think, certainly I think, that God was not cruel at all. So do I. I also think he was not cruel one bit. Naturally, there have been many other coincidences, like Sodom and Gomorrah. But then, if you look dim, deep into the pinpoint of their situation, you'll find out that God was not cruel. He had given them chances, he had had patience on them, and he had yet had mercy on them. So our God in the Old Testament was not at all cruel, but he was a loving and kind God. So always be mindful to take things into the pinpoint that they can go because our God in the Old Testament was not at all cruel. He was full of mercy and compassion, just like the New Testament. Goodbye, Bombinos. See you next time. Bombinos, I hope you enjoyed our story. Remember what we just learned? God in the Old Testament is no different to the God in the New Testament. Bambinos, do you remember when you were children? I know when I was a child, which was a very long time ago, I used to think my parents were so harsh. I used to think they were so mean. It's only as I have gotten older and now that I have younger siblings, I understand they did everything out of love for us. So that's why we think that God in the Old Testament seems to be a so harsh because we are just his children and he wants us to grow and learn and that's when his child our sibling jesus christ came to this world we were able to understand god the father a lot better that's why people say god in the old testament and god in the new testament is two completely different people Actually, it's not. Jesus helped us to grow in our faith so that we are able to understand God the same. Remember, Bambinos, God is always the same yesterday, today and tomorrow. So, Bambinos, I hope you enjoyed our story. Now, let's go and do some art and craft. This art and craft is so special. 
this art and craft will remind you of the very first rainbow. What an amazing thing it is, a rainbow. And why? It is a symbol of God's covenant, God's love, God's promise to us. I hope you know who I'm talking about. Yes, it's the Noah's Ark. Let's go and learn how to make our own rocking Noah's Ark. Bambinos, are you ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and do some art and craft. Do you remember the pact that God made with Noah? He promised not to flood the world ever again. So, do you guys remember Noah's Ark? Well, guess what we're making today? It's Noah's Ark. For this art and craft, you will need a paper plate, yellow paper, white paper and pink paper. We'll also need brown paper, but we didn't have brown paper, so we painted some white paper brown. You will also need some PVA glue, a pencil, um, something to colour with, brown and blue. But in this instant, uh, I'm using a brown crayon and a blue felt tip. And lastly, you will need scissors. So let's get started. Firstly, you will need to get your paper, uh, your pink paper, and you will need to draw with a pencil one circle now right now we are going to make a tiger and we're going to have to draw a little circle there and a little circle there now we'll need two of these so i'll just make another. so now we have cut both our tigers we need to draw on these tigers so first we're going to do a gentle slowly just to mark the ears. Okay, so in our bambinos, we are going to be doing the pandas. But in the same way, we have to draw two circles. Now we have to get our felt tip and we have to draw this. So now we need to get our yellow paper like this and we need to draw giraffes. That's right, we're doing giraffes. So we go like that. And now we're doing the mouth. And now we do both the ears. And then we go straight down. And I'm gonna make two giraffes. Now that we've got an adult's help to cut these out, we need to get a, a brown something to color with that's brown and we need to do little spots. These are going to be the giraffe spots. Are all our animals we need to move these away and next we're going to do our rainbow and we just need to draw a rough semicircle like this and this is going to be the outside of our rainbow and then we're going to do a little bit of the inside so next we need to color our rainbow now that we've colored our rainbow we need to take our paper plate fold it and put this paper, uh, this brown paper on. Um, we need to cut the brown paper so it looks kind of like this and put it on like this. And we need to get it like that. 
And after this, we need to stick it on using PVA glue. So after this, after we put the PVA glue on the paper, we should put the plastic plates here and we should press it on and then we put the other side on and we press that on to cut the corner of this. But now we've stuck it in and cut it, we need to get a brown crayon Right now I'm using a brown crayon. You can use paint or anything else and draw lines like these. Because this is the arc, so this is the wooden planks that hold the arc together. And we're going to stop there and then we're going to do lines like that. And lines everywhere. And after that, the bottom bit, we're going to be colouring it blue to represent the water. And now I'm going to do the waves on the boat, so like this. almost done. So now we have to stick on all our animals. Firstly I'm doing the giraffes. Now let's do the rest of the animals. All the animals have two of each because uh, the Lord sent two by two of each animal. Lastly we have to stick on the rainbow which represents the pact with Noah of God and that he will never flood the whole world again. So we get it ready and we just put it upside down and there we go Bambinos, that's our rocking boat done. I hope you enjoyed today's art and craft and learned how to make this awesome ark. Bye bye Bambinos! Bambinos, what an amazing rocking art! Bambinos, I cannot wait to see all your lovely works. Bambinos, now let's go and listen to our saint. I wonder which saint we are going to be learning about this time. Bambinos, let's do this together. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn about our saint. Hello Bambinos, welcome back. This week I'm going to tell you about a saint who is known as the only doctor of church in Lincoln. Do you know who it is? It is Saint Bede. Saint Bede was born in the year 673 on the lands of the monastery of Saint Paul at Jaro in North Angola, which is now known as Time and Well. At the age of seven, he was sent to Benedictine Monastery and joined with Abbot Chalfrey at Jaro. And later he joined with this and there was a tradition that during a plague which was spreading all over England, St. Chalfrith Abbey and the young bee was the only person. They were they both were leading the services. Not even any persons other than other than them were was leading the services. At the age of 90, Bede was ordained to be deaconate by St. John Bishop of York, and later that he accepted priesthood by the same polygon. When he was 30 years old, from receiving his priesthood and till the 59th year of his age, he was very dedicated in prayers. He was observed with the regular disciplines and sung in churches for daily services and he was also indulged in studying, writing and teaching. In addition to the 25 commentaries in the Holy Scriptures, he wrote his famous history of English scriptures and he also wrote about the lives of several English saints. 
In 701, we wrote his first work and after that he, he completed around 60 polygons. Except from a few visits to other monasteries, his life was spent in a round of prayers, observance of monastic scriptures and several studies. He was considered as the most learned man of his time and wrote many excellent biblical and historical books. Bede died on the Feast of Ascension on 26 May 735 and he was, his last words was, Glory be to the Father, to the Son and the Holy Spirit. Bede's remains has been transferred to Durham Cathedral in the 11th century. His tomb was but then diluted in 1541, but the contents were transferred and re-injured in the Delili Chapel at Cathedral. His scholarships and importance to Catholicism was recognized in 1899 and was declared him as the doctor of the church. His feast day was celebrated on two days. According to Western scriptures, it was celebrated on 25th May. According to English scriptures, it is celebrated on 27th May. And he became the only doctor of church in India. And Pompinos, remember all the facts that I have said about Saint Peter. Next week, we will meet you with another saint. Bye bye, Pompinos. What an amazing saint! I know I have learned so much. I hope you have too. Bambinos, now that we have heard about our saint, let's stretch out our hands and our legs and let's get dancing. I am so excited to move all my body and let's go and worship and dance for the Lord together. Bambinos, come on, join us. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and do some dancing. Praise the Lord, my lovely Bambinos. Today's topic, today's theme is God in the Old Testament. Many people think that in the Old Testament, God was very punishing, Oh, God was very rough with his people. Nah, I'll tell you something. In the Old Testament, the Israelites, the people from Israel, are known as God's own people or God's chosen people. Now, these people, they were, you know, very sinful and uh, let me tell you that God used to save them from wars. God is to save them from famine. God is to save them from the evil. God is to save them from all the bad things. These people, only for some time they used to be good. Only for some time they used to bow down and worship. After some time they used to go back to their old sinful life. Bambi knows I'll ask you something. If you go on committing mischief, if you go on being naughty, if you go on disobeying your parents, if you go on doing wrong stuff, won't your dad or mom correct you? Won't your mama or dada tell you that it's wrong not to do it? Won't your mama give you some... Huh? Mami knows, yes, of course. That is what God did. That is what a good father, a good parent would do. Correct his children. That doesn't mean that if you correct your children, that doesn't mean you're violent or punishing. No. That means you love your children. You don't want them to be spoiled, you don't want them to go in the wrong way. That is why God was correcting his children. God was, that, that doesn't mean that God is violent or punishing. No. In the Old Testament, these Israelites always were disobedient to God, 75% of the time. But God again and again tells this people of Israel, his own people, how can I forget you? God is telling them in the Old Testament most of the time. Even though you are sinners, even though you have committed the worst of the worst sin, he tells them, you are my love. Israel, I love you. You are my people. How can I be bad to you? I love you. I am your father. That means God is love. These people, Israelites, God can do boof and they will be doomed, finished. This, he can finish the people. But no, God loves us. 
God is love. He's not punishing. Our God is a loving God. He was loving yesterday. He is loving today. He will always love us forever. God never changes. Never changes. He is the same. He is just doing his duty of a father. Which father, which mother would not correct his children who are doing wrong? Only a parent, only a father or a mother who doesn't care for his children won't correct his children. Only a father who wants his children to do whatever they want, who doesn't care. Only that parent will not correct his children. But a father, a mother who loves his child, who cares for his child, will always correct his children, will always tell them when they are wrong. That is what God did. That doesn't mean that God was a punishing God. That means that God was a loving God. That means that God didn't want his people to go in the wrong way. But still, they were disobedient. They never cared. And those were the consequences. So my lovely Baminos, remember, if you live a life without sin, without doing wrong stuff, honoring and obeying God, and your parents, and your elders, your family members, your friends, and your neighbors, you will never be punished, and God will never punish you. But, my Bambinos out there who are doing mischief, and being naughty, disobeying their parents and God, and their friends, their neighbors, their teachers, their teachers especially, be careful. You might be punished, huh? But keep this in your mind that God is love, only a father who loves his children will correct. And that is what God did. My lovely Baminos, I hope you're ready now to sing and dance to this beautiful, lovely song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Here we go, Bambinos. Cross 
Bambinos, that is the end of our episode. But before we get going, we must go and receive our final prayer. As we come to the end of this episode of today, we pray, may the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you always. Bumbinos, not yet. We are not quite finished. We are forgetting something, aren't we? That's right. Let's get ready for the quiz round. So, Bumbinos, I hope you've been listening because this is the part of the episode where I check if you Bumbinos have been listening. Are you guys ready? Perfect. So, Bumbinos, like usual, I'm going to ask you five questions and I'm going to give you 10 seconds to come up with the answers. Get it right and you'll get a point. Get it wrong and let's watch this episode again and let's learn this together, Bambinos. Are you guys ready? Question number one. When was God mentioned for the very first time in the Holy Bible? Was it one, the creation story? Two, the Moses story? Three, Noah's Ark? Number four, Adam and Eve. Bambinos, 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is the creation story. Well done you if you got that correct. Are you guys ready for question number two? Question number two. How did God appear to Moses? Was it one? as tongues of fire, two, water, three, burning bush, or number four, as a snake. Bambinos, 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is a burning bush. So well done you if you got that correct. Bambinos, are you ready for question number three? The third question is, is God in the Old Testament any different to the God in the New Testament? And your options are, yes, no, depends, and option four, sometimes. So Bambinos, 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is no. Well done you. Bambinos, God is always the same. Word of God, God is always the same. He loves us so, so, so much from the very start. Amazing, isn't it? And he is the only person who does not change no matter what happens. Question number four, who was present from the very start of time? Was it A, God the Father, B, God the Son, C, God the Spirit, or four, all of them? Bambinos, 10 seconds on the clock. Bambinos, the correct answer is all of them because our God is a triune God. He is the Trinity. So we have the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And they can never be separated. And they always are together because that is our God. Bambinos, I hope you got that correct. Are you ready for the last and the final question? 
the fifth and the final question is what is the nature of god is he all loving all knowing he's everywhere or all, all present is he all powerful or is he all of the above 10 seconds on the clock Bambinos, he is all the above. He loves us so much. He is in fact the source of all love. He sees us no matter where we go. He knows us so well. He's always present. And of course, he is God. That means he is all powerful. So Bambinos, remember this about our God. So Bambinos, that is the end of our round. And that means that is the end of our episode. Bambinas, before we get going, I must set you this week's challenge. This week's challenge is to make your own rocking arc. I can't wait to see all your submissions. So like usual, please send in all your work to divinekids at divineuk.org. And Bambinas, we love to hear your testimonies, your experiences. And remember, we have the new segment which is called My Bambino. So please send in your testimonies, your experiences of how you feel when you watch this powerful program called Bambino. And we would love to include that at the end of our episode. So Bambinos, till next time, bye-bye and God bless. Praise the Lord, my lovely Bambinos. Today's topic, today's theme is God. Hello? I'm going to shoot you and quiz you. Age of seven, he was sent to Mon. At the age of seven, he was sent to Benedictine Monastery. Bubble, blah, 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 Bubble, blah, 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 blah,
Let's go Bambino! Thank you.